Hey everyone, this week's guest is none other than U.S. world record distance thrower and 2022 U.S. distance champion David Wiggins. Everyone, welcome David. How are you today? Doing great. Awesome. Well, we're going to start off this chat by putting you in the hot seat and we're going to do the bio blast. So you only have 30 seconds to tell us five quick facts about you that people might not know. Are you ready for that? All right. I live on a boat. I'm on that boat right now. Um, I started playing disc golf when I was four years old. I'm from High Point, North Carolina. I have the world's rule record for the furthest throw with a disc at 1,108 feet. I've held every distance world age record from nine years old to the open world distance record um, since many have been broken. But at one point, I held from nine to the overall world record. Wow, that's really impressive. David, you grew up on the course with your family. So I kind of want to know what were those memories and experiences like playing from such a young age and kind of getting introduced to the sport um, and learning as you grew up as well? Yeah, so I was really fortunate growing up. My family moved right next to a disc golf course, and that's how we all got into playing. It was my dad would take me out there just to run around and get some energy out of me. And it turned into so far a, a lifelong, lifelong sport and passion. Um, started at the age of four and it was just fun. My dad, um, didn't have any experience playing before we moved there. So we got involved with the club, played regularly almost every day and stuck with it, started playing local events and moved, progressed into bigger events and eventually played my first world championship in the junior division at nine years old. Did you know kind of from a young age that this was something that you wanted to continue with and that there were goals you had at a young age that you wanted to accomplish? I think as a little kid, I was very competitive still. And I just saw these older guys around me that were so much better than me. And it really made me want to get that good. And I didn't realize that the age gap, you know, made sense in our differential and abilities. But all I wanted was to be as good as or better as the people that I was playing with out there. So that was that was cool from a young age competing against older older men, especially in regional events and then eventually working my way up, eventually winning. Growing up in North Carolina, it was only, Rock Hill was about one and a half, two hours away. And it was, and still is, my favorite event to go to every single year. And it's the most prestigious event, in my opinion, right up there with the World Championships. But just the, uh, just the feeling of being there at that event, there's, there's nothing like it. It's, it seems like the, the biggest thing in disc golf when you're there. So as a little kid, I always looked forward and was hoping to play the event as soon as I could. My dad would take me there to watch and try to qualify in the Monday qualifier from a young age. And when I was 13 years old, they had a system where every state got a spot, a USCGC qualifying spot, but you had to earn it. And you earned it through a point series system throughout the year playing tournaments around the state. And I wound up winning it and got a qualifying spot to the USCGC when I was 13 years old. So that was pretty cool being the youngest player qualify. I mean, I know you're 13, but like, what were your feelings? I was still a little kid at that point, but after walking it for years and watching, you know, my idols play out there for years, being able to be inside the ropes and in the lines, you know, throwing shots with them was, it was surreal. It was a really cool experience. Didn't play great my first year, but I, I came back in the following years had some had some good finishes. All right, David, in under a minute, give us your quickest how to for your 360 degree throw. When you throw a 360, you want to incorporate as much of your body, lower body, and upper body as possible. I'm exerting the full force of what I can when I throw a 360, and I'm using my body weight to transfer that force throughout the throw and to accelerate my arm as quick as I can by the time I release the disc. And the really the most important part is that that hop and spin, and it's, it's one real smooth motion when I do it, and my arm's lagging a little bit behind my legs, and it's almost like winding up my body, just release all that energy, kind of like a, a rubber band when you pull it. To this day, I think a boss is the furthest flying disc out there. Its combination of speed 13 and the glide that it has is unmatched in distance. I'm still my go-to disc. I've got 
over a hundred bosses in in my storage unit that I'll go to and sift through and find the ones that meet the conditions that I need to throw the furthest shot, ranging from Blizzard bosses to Max Wade Star bosses. When the boss came out, I think it was I want to say it was 2010 at the USDGC, and they gave everybody one of the champion boss and their players pack. And the first time I threw it, it was clearly 30 feet further than anything else I, I had thrown. I, I a destroyer in my bag at the time, and the boss immediately went in my bag and took the spot as the longest thrown disc. David, what does your disc golf world look like now? Do you have any future goals for this year or in years to come? Yeah, so my touring um, schedule is certainly more relaxed than it was in the years past, especially before I went to college. But I'm still still throwing, still training to throw distance, and I'm looking forward to hitting a few larger events. I'm getting ready to go to the preserve later this month and uh, compete out there. There's a few distance competitions coming up this year too. We got one at the preserve, the United States Disc Golf Championships, and at the World Championships. So look for me out there on those. And I also compete on somewhat of a local level here um, in Louisiana. And then we'll pop out to a few pro tour events throughout the year. Yeah, ever since I was a little kid, I was always trying to either get on the course or get on the water and go fishing or something along the sorts. I, I went to welding school actually before I went to college and I wanted to learn how to build a boat. So when I was 18, I built my first boat, welded it out of aluminum. And then that kind of pushed my interest to go to school to design boats. So I went to school in Louisiana at the University of New Orleans for naval architecture and marine engineering, which is essentially the design and engineering of boats and ships. Um, through that, I got into marine surveying, which is basically, you know, boots on the ground, going on the vessels, doing inspections. You're checking from anything from safety to the condition of the vessel to putting a value on a vessel. And it could be a a bulk carrier ship, it could be a barge, it could be a yacht. Um, I do all kinds of different things, so it's it's really neat. I like to be outside. I've worked an engineer desk job before. Couldn't do it. wasn't for me. So I enjoy uh, enjoy being out there on the water. Okay, question one: What is your favorite movie? Oh, classic Forrest Gump. I grew up watching it. Great story. Could watch it a hundred times. Tom Hanks. Question two, would you rather cook or order in? Depends on the night. If I'm if I'm busy and worn out from working or physical activity, definitely order. But I do like to cook as well. Is there one meal that is like your favorite to cook or just like the easiest thing? You're like, okay, I'll just throw this together. Love cooking seafood. That makes I, sense. I've, I've, crab traps. I've got crab traps out on Lake Pontchartrain. I'm, I'm bringing in fish all the time too, so... Seafood's my go-to. Question three, what's the best gift you've ever been given? I think when I was a kid, my parents got me a kayak. And I always wanted my own boat to go out exploring on. And uh, once I had that, I had freedom to go wherever I wanted on the water. So that was a cool gift. Question four, what's your favorite month of the year? Favorite month, I'd have to say October. I really like the fall when it starts cooling down and the leaves start changing and go camping and really enjoy being outside. All right, last question. If you had to describe yourself as an animal, which one would it be? An animal? Oh, I'd go with a dog, I'd say. I don't know why. Just going with dog. <laughs> I like labs, so I'm going to have to say lab. <laughs> <laughs> 